but today's our day, so I brought my beer. <laughs> Let's go with this one. Who needs a podium? <laughs> Alrighty. Okay. Well, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Here we are, huh? Here we are. For most of us, four years later, four years after your parents dropped us off in front of our residence. Four years after we nervously left our room for the first time to socialize. Four years after we left our first university class with an overwhelming sense of terror and doom. I remember the first time I drove into Wolfville and I thought, uh, uh, where's the rest of it? <laughs> and now Wolfville has become my home. This university has become my home. Our home. This is a, a university where we have become adults. It's a place where we've accomplished goals. It's a place where we have met uh, some friends that will last a lifetime. Acadia will always hold a special place in my heart because it taught me who I really am. This is a school that embraces uh, difference. It embraces risk. It embraces responsibility. And you always feel like you belong even if you're from a small major like me. I'm a, a theater studies major. Woo! Yeah. 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 We're a small group, that's 10 people. <laughs> Seriously. Um, so essentially, I spent the past four years studying how to be an actor. It has been my belief since my first day here in Acadia that everybody should actually be required to take an acting course because it applies to everybody, which is why I'm excited to speak on this year's behalf. Uh, a lot of poets, playwrights, uh, philosophers, actors, directors have spent a lot of time trying to define acting, but I believe that acting is the study of life. It's the study of human interaction. We study uh, community, we study culture, we study relationships. Acting is, in a broad sense, um, understanding how this world works. One of the other things we spend a lot of time on in acting is the importance of getting it wrong. And that's what I'd like to speak with you guys about today. In acting, we use getting it wrong as a tool to better understand our character. A lot of people put the most emphasis on what a character does do, but what a character doesn't do is equally as important and telling. And the way we figure that out is by trying something and getting it wrong. A lot like life, huh? Um, on a personal level, I have an endless list of ways that I got it wrong. Uh, I think we all do, but um, I'm going to share some of them with you today. I, uh, in high school, I was, I was a, uh, well, I was an idiot. There's really no other way to put it. I don't, I don't like to tell a lot of people this, but, um, <laughs> shh. Oh wait, there's a lot of people here. <laughs> no time like the present. Uh, I took seven years to get through high school, because I never went to class. I hated it. I hated getting up in the morning. I hated physically going to class. I hated learning about things I wasn't interested in. I hated tests. I hated exams. I hated everything about school, the academic part. I loved the social aspect. There were days that I would go to class or go to school and not go to a single class. I would spend the whole day mingling with uh, fellow skippers or, or, or people on their spares. I, I, I loved the social aspect. I also love to sleep. Now, for those of you who know me, um, not much has changed, actually. Um, but more so then. There were days where my, home, my mom would come home from work and I would just have slept through the whole day and I would hear her jump out of bed, throw some clothes on, sneak out the back door, run around the front and walk in after her and pretend like I was just coming home from school. This is true, actually. Um, now, as you can imagine, this has problems. At my high school, and I'm sure everyone's high school, if you missed a class, you got a phone call, and I'm sure most of us can recite this phone call today. Mine was a student in your household in grade 10 attending Malvern Collegiate Institute was absent today for periods one, two, three, four, five. Um, so my mom kept getting these phone calls. 
And at first I would come up with these ridiculous excuses like, oh, well, Mom, I was on my way to school, or on my way to class, and, and then I stubbed my toe, so I thought, well, I better go to the nurse, and, and she wasn't there, so I waited, and I waited, and because, you know, I thought it was better to wait than sit in class and be distracted and not be able to focus, so I waited, and I waited, and I waited. But would you believe the nurse isn't in on Wednesdays? Jeez. Uh, side note, I realized at a young age I wanted to be an actor. Um, <laughs> Well, eventually my mom said, you know what, that's enough. I am, I'm gonna wake you up every morning and I'm gonna drive you to school and drop you off so you have absolutely no excuse to be late. Well, that lasted about three days. And then what would happen is she would drop me off and she would turn the corner and I would turn around and, and I would go to sleep. Um, but these phone calls, they, they kept coming and I would always try and grab them before she came. Um, but I started getting fed up with that. So then I did something that I actually feel kind of a, a sense of pride telling you about today. I went to the, uh, to the office and I spoke with the secretaries and I said, how are you? My, my family has uh, gotten a new phone number and I gave them my cell phone number. <laughs> right? Makes sense. So I would miss class and, uh, and they would call. We'd, my mom and I, I'd be sitting right next to my mom, we'd be watching the 6 o'clock news or something, and I would get this call, a student in your household attending blah, 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 and I would be like, yeah, hey man, no, no, it's all good, yeah, yeah, what's up? Uh, but my teachers kept complaining that I was never in class. So, one day, uh, a day that I was actually in school, I got called down to the vice principal's office, and my mom was sitting there and my heart sunk into the bottom of my stomach. I will never forget that feeling. And the vice principal started to tell my mom what a screw up I was and how many classes I had missed, which was in the hundreds by now. And um, I just, I have to say, um, side note to this, my mom was, is, and will always be the smartest woman I have ever met. And I remember sitting there thinking, I have made my mom look like a fool. And that was devastating to me. My mom, who, who was a teacher actually, she had to miss some of her classes, drive across town, sit in the vice principal's office with me, and hear about what a screw up I was. That was, that was absolutely devastating to me. Um, one of the books that we spent a lot of time with in, in acting here at Acadia is Aristotle's Poetics. And in that book, Aristotle talks about tragedy. And he says that tragedy is the moment in a play when a character comes face to face with his true identity. And that was my tragedy. I was face to face with it, nose to nose. So, after that meeting, I didn't miss very many classes. Now, listen, I'm not gonna stand up here in front of all of you and tell you that I didn't miss any classes in university because that's just not true. <laughs> but, there were many times where I didn't want to go to class and I thought about that day and I thought about that look in my mother's eyes and I got up and I went and I felt good about my decision. And that is one of the great things about Acadia. It's a place that offers you a chance to realize your true potential. I came here with a long list of screw ups and this school embraced me and molded me into an adult. Looking, uh, looking back at that time in my life, after four years at Acadia, I can't, I can't help but go back into Aristotle's poetics, and I can't help but think of these two words that a professor here drilled into my mind, and those words are anagnorisis and peripatia. Anagnorisis and peripatia. Aristotle says that anagnorisis is the moment in a play when a character makes a discovery. It's literally the, the transition from ignorance to knowledge. Peripatia is when a character makes, or has a reversal in circumstances. He has a, a, a turning point. I, I am only 23, and I am fortunate, or misfortunate, however you want to look at it, to say that I have experienced both an anagnorisis and peripatia. That meeting with my mother in high school was my anagnorisis. It was my transition from ignorance to knowledge. I realized that what I was doing was stupid and it was unacceptable. Acadia, has offered me my peripatia. This is a school where I have learned who I was, what I want to do with my life, how I want to go about it. This is a school, this school is where I had my turning point. 
Acadia also taught me to embrace those failures in my life. I had to skip those classes. I had to see that look in my mother's eyes. It is a vital part of my character. It makes me who I am today. If I hadn't have been an idiot in high school, I would not be where I am today, which is standing in front of 900 people, speaking on behalf of all my peers as a, represent as a representative of the 2010 graduating class. All of you parents know, when you give a kid a rule, they're gonna break it. If you give them a boundary, they will push up against it, and that's okay. That is them trying to find the shape of the world. One of the reasons I love Acadia is because it's a school that let me push the boundaries. It forced me to make mistakes. It helped me shape my future based on those mistakes. I think the failures that we make in university and as adults are much like the ones we make as children. Not necessarily to, to find the shape of the world, but of our own intuition. This school taught me about problem solving, instinct, and my ability to figure my way through scenarios based on mistakes I made here and in the past. So, I'm gonna leave you with this. I'll leave you with a metaphor. This is, this is what I am taking from Acadia. Let's think of success and all, all the, the sacrosancts that go along with it, like passion and determination and, and teamwork. Let, let's think of that as a road. I think that failure is the car that gets you down that road. It's the vehicle that gets you down the path to success. And it's okay to veer off that path. You know, our, our, our driving instructors in society tells us to stay between the lines, but it's, it's okay to cross that line. You know when you're driving and you get distracted and that one wheel hits the rumble strip or the gravel, that, that feeling of, of terror and fear and nerve that you feel, that's okay. Embrace that. What would life be without that? Robert Frost said, take the road less traveled. That sums it up right there. It's not until we hit that rumble strip that we know who our character is. It's not until we hit that rumble strip that we can appreciate what we have. It's not until we hit that rumble strip that we can appreciate why people appreciate us. So, sorry to say this, parents, after four years of tuition, but if Acadia has taught me anything, it is that we have a responsibility to go out there and fail. <laughs> we have a responsibility to go out there and make mistakes. Mistakes inspire change. Mistakes push us, mistakes make us better. So go out there and challenge authority. Question yourselves. Find your peripatia, find your anagnorsis, find the shape of your world, and always remember that failure is not only an option, it is, it makes us who we are. And right now, we are graduates of Acadia University. Congratulations, everybody, and thank you.